The Whistler, another signal mystery. they dare not speak. Tonight, the signal oil company, marketers of signals famous, go farther, gasoline and motor oil, bring you another in a series of strange tales by The Whistler, a story of darkest Africa and two strangers who brought it no light. Listen to Black Magic. <laughs> First, I'd like to read you what the driver of a 1929 LaSalle thinks of Signal's go-farther service. Wilfred Pollard of Los Angeles writes, Naturally, when a car gets 15 years old, parts wear out and are difficult to replace. My radiator cap, for instance, is rusted so it no longer holds tight. Pop Figgett, at my signal station on Western and Herald Way, has on three occasions spent considerable time with pliers and wire repairing it. Pop does it without asking and with a smile that makes you feel like you're doing him a favor. It's this kind of service, over and above the line of duty, that makes me like to trade with signal oil dealers. Many folks are surprised these days to find signal dealers going out of their way like that to please a customer. But there's a reason for it. Each signal dealer is permanently in business for himself. He knows that the best way to keep his business good year after year is to give you thorough, reliable service that will keep you his steady customer. Such service is the reason so many drivers who want their cars to go farther are switching to signal stations. Why don't you drive in and get acquainted with your neighborhood signal dealer this week? Now, the Whistler. In the vast wilderness of equatorial Africa, a land of violent rains and oppressive heat, a small village huddled at the mouth of an American-owned mine, carefully set apart from the squalid native huts, stands the house of Paul Arnold, manager of the mine, master of the village. On this sticky afternoon, Paul is busy with his reports. Suddenly, his door is opened, and a tall man in dirty whites enters. Yes? No, see? I just wanted to tell you four more in the last hour. Maybe you want to add that to your report. I can take care of the reports without your help. Ah, uh, so? Perhaps you can run the mine without my help. Perhaps you can run the mine with half of the natives dead of malaria. I told you I've done everything possible. Dr. Kent should have been here days ago. Until he arrives, there's nothing more we can do. We could have forced the natives to take the quinine before this... Coming from you, that's a laugh. You've been here long enough to know you don't force these devils into doing anything. When Kent gets here, we'll take care of it. Until then, I don't want to hear anything more about it. Eh bien. But I think this doctor must have taken one look at Africa and turned back. Yes, Ackman. Your pardon, Mr. Arnold. The automobile from Nyona. Oh, good. You'd better give up thinking, Pepe. That's Kent now. Come on. Oh, Ackman. Stir up some of the natives to help with the luggage. If I can, Mr. Arnold. Never mind ifs. Do as you're told. Yes, now, Pepe, be careful what you say to this doctor, you understand? You make it very clear. Mm. Oh, welcome, Dr. Kent. Hello. Well, we got here finally. Well, we've almost given you up. I'm Paul Arnold, of course. Let me... But don't look so startled. This is my wife, Nora Kent. Paul Arnold. How do you do, Mr. Arnold? I... How do you do? Well, this is something I hadn't counted on. I'm sure it must be. I mean, of course, your letters, Kent. You didn't say anything about bringing your wife. I know. Nora decided to come at the last minute. Well, we... this is an honor, an unusual honor. We'll do our best to make you comfortable, Mrs. Kent. I'm sure I'll be able to manage quite well. Yes. Yes. 
Well, come along into the house. It keeps out a little of the heat, some of the rain, and none of the bugs. Pepe will see to unloading your equipment, Doctor. Well, thanks, but that's something I make it a rule to see to myself. Can't afford to have anything broken out here. Would you take Nora in? Of course. This way, Mrs. Kent. Thank you, Mr. Arnold. Nora. Nora Martin. Surprised, Paul. Surprised? Good Lord. <laughs> Oh, Paul, it's worth it. It's worth every unbearable mile of the trip out here just to see the look on your face. <laughs> yes, I must be very amusing. <laughs> just a clown. You don't have to be nasty. You? Married to Kent. When did that happen? When do you suppose? After you ran away so suddenly. I ran away. You're not going to pretend my leaving had anything to do with it. I'm not pretending anything. No, this is all very open and above board, isn't it? Your husband, does he know anything about me? I suppose you've told him all about us. I've told him nothing. I didn't even know it was your mind we were coming to until after we'd left. Otherwise, you wouldn't have come. I didn't say that. You thought it. You hate me, don't you, Paul? What do you expect? To be welcomed with flowers and kisses after That's the wake? all past, Paul. Perhaps we weren't just right for each other then. But, well, I know it'll sound crazy to you, Paul, but I need you now. You need me? Well, you have no idea why I'm out here. You couldn't possibly know. Oh, not just coming. Better warn you, he's very uh, jealous. Now it's my turn to laugh. Jealous. I pity him. Well, everything's all set. Oh, good, Doctor. Uh, I'll see about some coffee after your wife's description of the trip you can probably use some. Thanks. Sounds wonderful. Just make yourself comfortable. Right. Seems like a nice guy, Arnold. Very. Of course, this isn't exactly paradise, but I'm sure we'll be able to manage quite well. You're enjoying this, aren't you? Enjoying it immensely. About you, darling. Oh, sometimes I could kill you, dragging me out to a hellhole like this. When you'd much prefer to stay in New York with your many friends. No, I'm sorry, darling, but you happen to be my Roger, wife. Roger, I won't stay in this horrible place. You'll stay wherever I want you to stay. Besides, it's too late to think about getting out now. I'll get out of here more easily than you can imagine. Much more easily. I don't think so, darling. It's really going to be almost like a second honeymoon. Just you and me. Just you and me, Roger. Mr. Arnold. <laughs> So, Paul Arnold's guests, Dr. Kent and his lovely wife, Nora, begin a delightful stay in Africa. They unpack, eat sparingly of a dull dinner, and spend the evening in equally dull conversation. Now it's the following morning, and while Nora sleeps late, Paul and Dr. Kent begin the work at hand. How far of this building you say I can use for a clinic, Arnold? It's there, just ahead through the grove. Hmm. Not too well isolated from the village. Not too large. This is Africa, Doctor. You can't expect to find everything exactly to your liking. I realize that. I'm alarmed about the death rate. In your reports to the company, I didn't gather it was nearly this bad. Uh, most of the deaths have occurred since you and Mrs. Kent left the States. By the way, where is Mrs. Kent this morning? I'm surprised she's not with you. What do you mean by that? Well, you did insist on bringing her out here. And do you think it was a mistake, is that it? Since you ask, yes, it is. If I were you, I'd send her back as soon as possible. Perhaps. But Nora happens to be my concern. If you don't mind, I'd rather not discuss it. As you say. Who's that fellow making all that noise? The native medicine man. He's calling off the evil spirits. <laughs> my competition, is eh? Yeah, so far, he hasn't been very successful. No, but don't underrate his influence with these people. What's that? I don't know. Sounds like trouble in the village. Come on. Right. Oh, Pepe! Pepe, what's the trouble? Uh, the usual thing. This fellow refuses to work. All right, take care of him. Oh, 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 oh. Hey, uh, just a minute. I'd, I'd like to talk to him. Go ahead. You others, go on. Get back to your house. Yeah. Uh, you. What's your name? Me, Nebo. Why aren't you at the mine? Digging in us evil. Bring curse. 
Big sick. But we're going to take care of the big sickness. You go back to the mine. Nebo go to Mazaka. Mazaka? What do you mean? No evil in Mazaka. Nebo go. But I'm trying to tell you. You're wasting your breath, can't You can't reason with him. Take him away, Pepe. We oui. Come on, you. What was he talking about? This Mazaka. That's a village on the plateau. They'll all run there if you don't watch them. Why? Oh, to more of their magic, I suppose. He said no evil in Mazaka. What did he mean? The natives have an idea there's no malaria there. It's possible. An area of immunity, maybe. I don't know. Let's get back to the house. Might as well. These, uh, these people, they don't seem to be too fond of you. I'll take care of that. You stick to your test tubes. <laughs> Yes, Kent, stick to your test tubes. There's not time to lose. The mine's output, you know. Besides, Nora's beginning to act strangely. Almost as if some kind of a plan were beginning to take form in her pretty head. And you really can't watch her properly while your job is yet to be done. Can you, Doctor? Still experimenting, eh, Kent? No, oh, hello, Arnold. Glad you're here. Just tried to call you at the mine, but I couldn't seem to make the phone work. Maybe you didn't crack it right. Anyhow, what's up? Find out something? Have you heard of blackwater fever, Arnold? It's a form of malaria, a particularly deadly form. And that's what hit us? No. No, that'd be easy. I've treated blackwater cases. The worst of them was nothing like this. What are you getting at? I'm telling you that we're up against something. This is a form of malaria worse than anything I've ever seen before. Frankly, I don't know exactly what it is. But I do know that the usual treatments, quinine, arsenical salts, and the rest don't even touch it. What do you intend doing? I'm going to Mazaka. Mazaka? If it's an area of immunity, as the natives seem to think, there must be some reason. You'll go up there alone. That's what I intend. And you won't find the natives too cordial to white men. I know that. I have to take my chances. It's your funeral, Kent. Maybe. I'm starting for Mazaka this afternoon. And if you should happen to run into my dear wife, you might tell her that. <laughs> Well, Nora, I see you've packed my toothbrush. Anxious for me to leave? You don't have to be crude. I don't think you should make this trip, Roger. Oh, no, don't worry. I'll be back. At least there's no fever in Mazaka. Oh, stop it. I'm sick of hearing about it. Get hold of yourself. Oh, ouch. Don't you hurt my arm. You listen to me. I don't want to listen. This time you're going to. While I'm gone, I want you to stay away from Arnold. Oh, jealousy again? You think I've forgotten? Just wipe the slate clean and start over? No, Roger, you don't forget. You're like an elephant. I don't want to forget. Night after night, you running around while I planned how to do away with myself so I could stop thinking. You were always so busy. You resented the fact that men found me beautiful. We'll see how much good your beauty does you out here. Oh, Roger. Can you give up this trip to Mazaka? Can't we both get out of here? I'll change. I'll do anything you say, only let's leave this place. After you've learned your lesson, Nora. All right, Roger, have it your way. You make me glad for every hour I've made you suffer. Yes, come in. The guys are waiting, Kent. Fine, I'm ready. Why don't you give up this insane trip? Still trying to talk me out of it? It's for your own good. I wonder if all you're worried about is my health. You're a stubborn fool. Remember, I told you. You too? That's my second warning in the last few minutes. Well, I'm off. Oh, yes, uh, one thing more, Arnold. While I'm gone, see that Nora doesn't leave this house. Don't worry. I'll be here, waiting. You are listening to The Whistler, another signal mystery brought to you by your friend, the Signal Oil Company. Marketers of Signal's famous go farther gasoline and motor oil. Dr. Kent is on his way to Mazaka, leaving two people with very much on their minds. 
To help things along, rain has begun to fall. Cold, drizzling, clammy rain. Falling without stop for three long, dreary days. Now it is night. Nora's pacing the room like a caged tigress. Arnold is trying to get something on the radio. Paul, stop fooling with that thing. Static's pretty bad tonight. Turn it off! My, what a case of nerves we're developing. Why don't you relax? Oh, this everlasting rain, rain, rain. You all get used to it in time. I don't want to get used to it. He had no right bringing me here. Well, that's your affair. Why don't you try to get some sleep? Oh, sleep. I'm there in my room listening to the rain, feeling the hay that's all around. There's no use getting all worked up again. It's easy for you, sitting there so calm. You think for one minute that I like it here? 10,000 miles from nowhere, day after day, with nothing but filth and disease? I can't understand where you stay, Paul. I have my reasons. You could go back where there are people, the theaters, the cafes. You could be happy. Let's not talk about it. Oh, Paul. Oh, we meant so much to each other once. You killed all that. We could go away together. Anywhere. Start all over again. Well, I promise I'll make you happy. Like we were before. <laughs> you couldn't make any man happy. You love me. You still love Stop me. Stop it, Nora. We're meant for each other. Our meeting here again proves Keep that. away from me. We'll go away now. Very pretty. Fine performance. Oh. You never could love anyone. Men are just something that you fit into that world you've built around yourself. But it's true. I do love you. It isn't going to work this time. Oh, night. can't you forget what's past? Oh, no, because I know what you're after. You want to get away from here, and I look like a convenient return ticket home. How can you say that? You're afraid. Afraid of being out here with him. No. Roger will do anything I say. I overheard your little love scene when he left. Looks like he's finally onto your tricks. Oh, stop it. And now he's going to make you pay. I'm your last hope, but it isn't going to work. You know everything, don't you? I know you, Nora. You're bad medicine. Just a minute, we have visitors. Who is it? Ahmed, the chief of the natives is here to talk to you. Just a minute. Nora, go to your room. Gladly. All right, come in. Why are you here, Chief Osman? My brother, the fever has him. What do you want from me? The new one. When does he return from Azaka? Now, two or three days. You send for him now. Maybe he say my brother. I've got my own troubles. You told me the new one will help us. Can't you understand? It takes time. Too much time. The fever, very bad. I'm sick and tired of hearing you complain. Get out. For so long, you do nothing. Bring no help. I said get out. You tell company nothing. You want my people to die, I know. What did you say? You want mines to be bad. Company, go away. Leave the mine. Shut up. You want to take mines. I will tell the new one. I'll stop your blabbing tongue. Oh, He's right. No, don't. You're joking, Ash. Take your guns and his Never nose. talk don't after I get to him. Oh, through with you. Curse of leg on your head! Ah, <laughs> uh, now talk, you stupid fool. You killed him. Chief Osman. He threatened me. You heard him? The curse is evil. You should not have killed him. He deserved it, always talking. All right, take him out of here. Make sure they won't find him. And if you say anything about this, I shall take him. Remember, Ahmed. Not a word. To anyone. So, Paul, that's your little scheme. Let the natives die off so the company will abandon the mine. Then you will take over. Very clever, perhaps. Oh, Achman won't dare talk. And Osman can't. Now there is only Kent and his beautiful wife, Nora. Another day passes, and still another. Now it is night. The rain is gone, and the quietness has come. The sort of quiet that creeps into the bones and ferments in the mind. But now, suddenly, the silence is broken. 
Out with the drums. They're beating the drums. It is the village. They haven't done that for days. I don't understand. What's happening? The natives, something's wrong. It began so suddenly. Oh. They're shouting. Listen to them like wild savages. He's strange. I don't like it. Come on, Ahmed. let's see what's wrong. You can't leave me here alone. I'll be safe. But I'm going with you. I won't stay here. All right. Look at that glow in the sky. They've got a fire going. The drums. They can speak right into your blood. Crazy chant, Azora. Some more of their stupid magic. To my people, magic is important. What good does it ever do you? It can save. That we call white magic. White magic? It can also kill. That is black magic. That's enough of that kind of talk, Ahmed. Oh, look there. There are the trees. You can see them dancing around the fire. Wait a minute. This is close enough. Yes, yes. It is better that they do not see you. Oh, oh I'm afraid. Let's go back. Stop your whimpering. Be quiet. Look at those two. They're tying him to that post. No, no. It is not a man. But what is it? An effigy, a straw image of one who is evil. We call it a legba. A legba? Oh, that effigy. It looks like you. No. No, you're imagining it. Walking toward the legba. Ahmed, what's he saying? He says, O oh, Asman, great chief, thy death shall be avenged. Asman? They found him. He says, with his white spear, I call black death upon the evil one who killed our chief. The curse of Legba upon him. He threw the spear into it. The curse of Legba. No, not me. No, never get me. Away. No, never get me. That's right, Paul. They'll never get you, not you. That's right. Hurry madly back to the house. Now get your things together. Hurry, there's no time. You've got to get away. I've got to get away. I have to hurry, there's no time. Who's there? It's that Paul. What's the matter? I'm getting out of here right now. But there is no boat for three days. I'll hide out in jail. Now hurry, Ahmed. Help me. Oh, listen to me. Don't bother me. There's no time. I'm going with you. You can't leave me here. Don't be a fool. Your husband... My chance. I'm going with you. I'd be crazy to take you. You're poisoned. No use, Paul. You'll never get on that boat without me. Why not? Because I know why you're running away. That effigy. It was you. No, I tell you, it wasn't. You killed that chief. Unless you take me, the police will be waiting for your chair. You tell them? You know I would. Get your things. Hurry. I'll be ready in a minute. Hartman, bring my other bag. I have it here. And your gun. Good, I may need it. Oh, what else? A car. Someone is coming. Kent, you're back. I heard drums, natives down the road. What's going on here? They've gone mad. I don't know what... Arnold, your bags. What's happened? I'm getting out there after me. What are you talking about? They'll kill me. The curse of leg bars. Calm down, man. Listen to I'm me. I'm already, what? Paul. We can... Roger. Nora. And your bags. You were going with him. Now, wait, Kent. I can explain. Yes, I'm going with him. We love each other. Nora, she's lying. Can't you see she's We've lying? We've together for a long time. That's not true. And now Paul is taking me away. No, he isn't. I'll kill him first. Keep away from me. I've got a gun. You sneaking rat. Stay back. Stay back, I tell you. Don't. Oh. Oh. Kill him. You. You made me do it. Ahmed, quick, the car. Yes, I'll go. No one can stop us now, Paul. Stay here and run. Paul, you can't. You can't. I'll go mad. No, you won't. Here, my gun. You no. tell yourself. No, Paul. Paul, wait for me. Wait, wait, Paul. Roger. He thought you... Just got me in the shoulder. He, he, he won't come back for me. You he will. You get away. Just a telephone call. They'd stop you with the boat. Bring you back. You think you've got me now? That you'll keep me here? Come here. You think me. I'm beaten that everything will go just like you wanted? Listen. Well, you're wrong. You're wrong. Nora, you better start changing done? your plan. Nora. Beginning right now. Nora.
Hello? Maybe? Paul Arnold is on his way to Jana. Catch him. He just killed my husband. <laughs> Now, in just a moment, the whistler will return to give you the strange ending of tonight's tale. But first, I'd like to recall for you Oliver Wendell Holmes' poem, The One Horse Shay. It lasted a hundred years to a day, and then the whole thing fell apart. That's a lot different from the way cars wear out today. Only one vital part that can't be replaced has to wear out, and the whole car goes off the road. Uncle Sam says that will happen to one in every 12 cars this year. Well, so that no vital part on your car will wear out from lack of lubrication, signal dealers take special precaution when they lubricate your car. They use the famous signal safety chart, on which the maker of your particular car shows every lubrication point and the exact oil or grease it should have. Before your signal dealer returns your car to you, he checks every point on your car against the safety chart, not just once, but twice, so not a single part can be missed. That's your guarantee that every part on your car will have its full share of the lubricant that will help it last out the duration. Yet you pay no more for this finer, longer-life lubrication. So if it's been a thousand miles or two months since last lubrication, why not protect your car by driving it into your neighborhood signal dealers for a signal safety chart lubrication? And now, back to the whistler. <laughs> Well, everything has worked out fine, hasn't it, Nora? Only a few minutes now and you'll be saying goodbye to Africa forever. That's right. Sit down at your stateroom dressing table. Admire your beauty in the mirror. You did get away after all. Of course, poor Paul. But he's getting just what he deserves. And now the boat is moving. You think you played your cards well. Of course, you couldn't know that Roger had found the answer to the strange form of malaria. That he was planning to take you away. You couldn't know that. So admire yourself in the mirror. Oh, what's the matter? No use breaking the glass, Nora. It's too late. You've seen it. That strange pallor to your skin. The fever is in your beautiful body, Nora. The fever, Roger said, was much worse than Blackwater. But of course, Roger is dead. And he can hardly save you now. Broadcast for your entertainment by Signal Gasoline and Motor Oil and your neighborhood signal dealer at your service to keep your car running for the duration. The Whistler was produced and directed by George W. Allen. The story by Salstein and Martin Wark. Music composed and conducted by Wilbur Hatch. This program is being transmitted to our troops overseas by the Armed Forces Radio Service. Listen again next Monday night at 9 for The Whistler. Bill Pennell speaking. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System.